Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to be looking at the Devise Gem, what it is, why it's cool, how you can get started with it. If you are building a Rails app and you need authentication of some kind, which is a very common thing for websites to need to manage user accounts and things like that. If you find yourself in that situation and you're making it in Rails, I highly recommend using Devise to handle that for you. Devise is a very easy to set up solution for managing users or for managing authentication on any model. It is, it's very easy to set up, it's very powerful, it's very flexible, and it's very secure, which is like the most important thing of all, right? When you're, when you're dealing with a security matter, you want the best. And Devise, it's deceptively easy to set up, but it's still strong enough the, the password protection and things like that, the methods that it uses for salting and digesting passwords are powerful enough and good enough that you could use it at enterprise level or you could use it for your own personal projects. It's really one of my favorite gems out there and I'm surprised that I haven't done a video on it prior to now. So let's just jump right into it. I will have a link of course for the project's GitHub page in the video. And so I just generated here a new Rails app and don't have anything in it yet, but we will in a second. So as always, when adding gems, the first thing to do is to go to your gem file and add device, and then go ahead and do the bundle install. Now, if you'd like, you can follow along in the instructions that they have in their GitHub page. This is actually extremely well documented, which is nice. So the first thing to do after you do the bundle install is to run this command, this Rails generate device install. And while that's doing that, oh, never mind, it's done. <laughs> so for the so this is like a little bit of configuration that you need to do when you're setting it up. So in your development.rb, you're going to want to add this line within the do block here up at the top. So there's that piece of it, and we can ignore that one for now, numbers two and three. Now, it's also gonna be important to run this command, the generate device views, because if you don't, it will not make the views accessible to you, and so you'll just be like, where are where are these templates coming from? And and that'll be a little bit confusing. That that certainly has been the case for me when I've set set this up and not run this command. I was sort of like, wait, where where are those emails coming from? Where are those views coming from? And so on. So those those previous couple commands basically set up just the the gem itself, but didn't hook it up to any model in our app in our database. And so that's sort of the, the next thing to do with this, with this next command here, Rails generate device and then the model name. Now, 99.99999% of the time, it's going to be Rails generate device user because you are, because you want a user model. And if you are trying to make it for some other model, that's fine too. They were kind enough to make it generic, but I would say Every single time that I've done it in the past, and probably most times that you will as well, Rails Generate Device User is going to be the correct way to go. And then, of course, once you've done that, do the rake db migrate to put that into your database. To be honest, that's like the whole thing right there. We we should do a couple things. So let's do a rake roots to see what we have available to us now. So you'll see there's things like user sign in, there's user sign out, password new, password edit, there's sign up, there are various, you know, the CRUD operations for new users and things like that. And so with that in mind, why don't we start up a Rails server and look at those in action? So here you can see if you go to slash users slash sign up, that's this one, the new user registration. This will allow you to set up your email, set up your password, 
and so on. And then it will, of course, log you in. You can also, so we're now signed in. And so that's basically the, that's the whole thing that goes into it. You know, you see here, you have your user sign in, user sign out. These are, of course, the shortcuts that you'd use if you wanted to like make a logout button, if you wanted to make a new user session and registration of course is down here. There are as well support for emails. So like when somebody signs up, they'll get an email that says, hey, click this link to confirm your account. Or, and there's also like password reset, like I forgot your password, things like that. And one of the really helpful things that's sort of not advertised upfront as prominently as all this other functionality is that you get some kinds of helper methods. So for example, authenticate user, this can basically, like if you put that in your controller, that will ensure that nobody can access certain pages unless they are signed in, for example. And another one that you can do, this is one of my favorites, is current user. This is helpful if you want to access the information about the person that's currently signed in at the moment. So this is helpful for, for a lot of things, but it's helpful, I'd say, in my experience, it's been most helpful for doing authorization type stuff without having to bring in another gem like can, can, can. To give you a concrete example, there was, I was helping set up a messaging app and, or I was helping set up the messaging part of an app and there was no check being made. It was just like loading a conversation, but it wasn't checking to make sure that the current user, the person that was using it was one of the participants in the conversation. And that meant that if you just guessed the ID of a conversation, you could access it and participate in that and read that conversation. So that's a huge oversight. That's an extraordinarily terrible security hole. But And so what I did was I said, you know, I, I extended the controller to say, is the current user one of the people that is part of this conversation? And if so, then you can give them access to it. And if they're not, then direct them somewhere else. So author, authorization and authentication are slightly different things. Authentication is having a user account. Are you signed in? Are you not signed in? Things like that. Authorization, by contrast, is do you have access to this particular page? Or do you not have access to this particular page because it's not your page or because it is your page, depending on what the case is? And I'll probably do a video for Can 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 at some point in the future. That's sort of the standard for authorization gems. But this one is Devise. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next one.